Welcome back to another RC Worst video. Today we're going to be walking you through how to properly prime a jet pump or an above ground type pump. So there's a few things that you want to keep in mind. We've got this one set up here on our test bench. We're just going to roll through a couple of different situations, show you some cool tricks, and uh, let's jump right into it. So the first thing that we're going to show you is just the basics of getting the jet pump primed, which I guess we should talk about at first. The idea with priming the jet pump is you want the entire casing as well as your suction line completely full of water, no air. That's your ideal scenario. Now we've got this one set up with a quick disconnect. So in this scenario, we can just quickly unhook this and then we're able to just dip this down in the drink, let it fill with water. And then secure it back up. Now all we have to do is fill the pump volute all the way through to this section of the line. We've made that really easy for ourselves by putting a ball valve in right up top here. So we open this up just like so. I've got a jug of water here. We'll take and just fill this up. Now I'm never gonna get this all the way full to the top because it's just gonna go back out the discharge line. So that should be enough right there. So again, one thing I want to talk about with the quick disconnects real quick is if you notice that this one is oriented uh, vertically up and down, so the gasket in here is not getting any strain. I found through experience, if you're, you have your quick disconnect horizontally mounted, then you're going to get some pull down on that hose when it's running or creating suction, you're gonna get some pull down. And ultimately what happens is, is if it's mounted like this and you get that pull down, then you're gonna get air that slips past that gasket and you can eventually airlock the pump if you get just the right circumstance. I had a situation where we had about 25 or 30 feet of suction line and the customer had installed it horizontally like I had mentioned and that gasket was letting air in so his pump kept losing its prime, caused some problems where we had to rebuild the pump which is actually a pump that re we rebuilt in a previous video. So that's just a tip if you're gonna use quick disconnect try to orient it vertically so that you don't don't have that strain on the gasket. So enough said about that. The next thing that we got to do is now that we've got our valve closed and we've got our pump primed is we just simply got to apply power and when it comes to applying power on our discharge line we've got a ball valve over here that we're going to be able to crack partially open to allow some back pressure on the pump so that it doesn't just quickly throw all the water out and we potentially lose our prime. When you're dealing with longer runs of suction, uh, suction pipe or deeper uh, pieces of suction pipe or in instances where you've got a two pipe uh, jet pump where you've got a lot of pipe down the well, you don't always know that you've gotten all the air out of the system. Some could have got trapped. So having that ball valve on the discharge side is a good way to keep some of the water in the system and then gradually open that as you hear the air kind of rushing out of it because the air is going to make a lot more noise going through the valve than the water does so you'll start to hear it smooth out as you're working through that. Um, one word of caution when it comes to a ball valve is you want to make sure that if you've got a jet pump it's usually not much of an issue uh, because the, the, in this case the pressure switch is on the pump itself but if your pressure switch is separated from your pump and you've got a ball valve in between, you can have some problems with somebody accidentally closing that ball valve or leaving it closed and that pressure switch calling for water and the pump building up a lot of pressure and you, if you've got filters or things like that, it could potentially blow those out. So be cautious when you have ball valves on the discharge side of things to make sure that they aren't interfering with the pressure switch operation. And if they are, you're very cautious in making sure that those are always open or at least partially open so the pressure has somewhere to go. If it doesn't or it's an unavoidable situation, make sure you got a pressure relief valve. So enough on the, the safety concerns and so forth of using a ball valve. Uh, let's turn this pump on and just show you quickly that it's totally primed up and then we'll show you another way to prime it real quick. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just partially open that ball valve, not open it all the way. I'm gonna go flip the breaker and then come back to the ball valve and then gradually open it all the way. So we're starting to hear the water flow. All right, 
So breakers off, we know that pump is totally primed. We have total water. If we were to open this right now, this would probably spit a little water at us if we open it. Open this up, and we got a little, little shower. So we know the pump is totally primed. The water is all the way to the tippy top there. So that was success. We completely worked the air out of it. We got everything full of water. The discharge line's full of water, which I have that closed off right now, which is why it's holding the water. Um, if I were to open that, this would just drain out and siphon out. So let's do that real quick, and then we'll show you the other way of priming, um, and you'll probably like that one as well. In the instance that you don't have quick disconnect, kind of backing up just a little bit, you're gonna have to pour water in this until everything is full. Uh, and that can take a lot of time, and sometimes that can take a lot of water, and if you don't have a garden hose or some easy way to get water in here, that can sometimes be a challenge. So, if you want, you can use a device like this. This is a pump priming uh, pump. <laughs> Interesting. So we'll thread this into our ball valve here. All right, so using this, we can easily take the water and draw it up the suction line and to fill the pump up. And now we know we're full because we got water coming all the way up through this. So, we should be able to take this off. So this should be full, or at least close to. So it did, so if you were able to see down in here, the water level is all the way up to this T right here, where it's then flowing back down into the discharge line. So that is exactly what we're looking for. So if we close this off and we run the pump a little bit, it's gonna fill the discharge line up and we'll do the same process again where we would partially open that ball valve, work the air out of the system, gradually open it all the way, and then the system's operating as it should normally. So if you're in a situation that I described where you might wanna pick one of these units up, we, do, we are gonna offer these on rcworst.com. So you could pick one of those up. Um, and it's gonna make priming your jet pump a lot easier if you don't have the convenience of a quick disconnect. So check those out. We'll put a link in the description below. Um, hopefully you've got something useful out of this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, we definitely appreciate that and that helps us grow as a channel. So we'll catch you next time.